everyone and welcome back to Shrey FC. I hope you all are well and you are good. Please do like the video and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. It's been a depressing season and what can get worse than playing Manchester City at the Etihad Stadium when they just have beaten Real Madrid in the Champions League second leg 4-0. There's nothing worse than that and I really don't know what's really going to happen because it could be a long, long day. But today in the video, I'll discuss if there's any way Chelsea can beat Manchester City or even get a draw or a respectable result. I'll discuss on our injury news, the likely 11. I'll discuss on Manchester City, the season they've went, the likely 11. So please, people, whether City fan, Chelsea fan, I'm a Chelsea fan, but I'm absolutely unbiased when it comes to a different team. Do hit the like and subscribe. And please do put your opinion in the comment section below. So starting off, first of all, with the opposition Manchester City. And what a team. That's how you run a proper football club. See... Now people bring that all the charges stuff, I'm not going to talk about that. In my hand, in my eyes, I'm seeing a club that is run very well, that has spent the same amount of money that United and Chelsea have done, uh, either less or more, in the last some years and see where they are, where United are, where Chelsea are, because they run properly. They have one of the best managers in the world running their club, they have one of the best scouting systems, they always don't sign the biggest players, they always bring players who are unproven but top, top quality player. Erling Haaland was proven, but Erling Haaland was not the top most around the world. He was a youngster who needed a development and City went and got him earlier than anyone else. United could have got him, Chelsea could have got him, they went there. Julian Alvarez, a gem. Just for 20 million, you tell me Chelsea cannot go and get that type of player, but we are just not smart enough. Bernardo Silva, they brought him straight away after the Monaco season while we all were sleeping. Why? That's the way we are. They went on to sign KDB from Wolfsburg. They have developed players like Rico Lewis and Foden from the academy. They brought an experienced player in Riyad Mahrez. Gundogan is one of the best and one of the most underrated midfielders in the last summer in the Premier League. Rodri was a fantastic buy who was allowed to bed in the club behind Fernandinho. That's the way you run football club. And right now, they are unrelentless. The way they played against Real Madrid, they killed Real Madrid. Fournil is not the story. Anyone who has watched the game... If not for Thibaut Courtois, that could have been 7, that could have been 8. They destroyed Real Madrid. Real Madrid, the royalty of football, tactically, physically, their pride, everything was torn away from them. And that is what Manchester City were. From the minute one, they pressed the heck out of them and they were not able to get out of the box. Rodri, immense. Bernardo Silva, immense. Gundogan, immense. KDB, immense. Grealish, immense the way he was creating. Haaland, yes, he did not score, but he was immense around everywhere on the pitch. John Stones, fantastic in the new midfield role. Ruben Diaz, immense at the back. Whenever Real had something taken away by Diaz and Akanji and Kyle Walker, Vinicius was nowhere to be seen because Kyle Walker. Ederson can easily sit there, have a bit of sip, and nothing is going to happen. That's what Manchester City are. So for this game, first of all, the injury news for Manchester City is only Nathan Ake, who might not be available for this game. So for me, they're going to make some changes, but not too much because they can be crowned the Premier League champions. So it's going to be Edison, the back three of Rico Lewis playing instead of Kyle Walker because they also have a Brighton mid-game coming up away from home. Ruben Diaz and Akanji will continue in this game. John Suss Rodri will continue with one of them being rested for the Brighton game if they clinch the title. Riyad Mahrez coming in for Bernardo, KDB and along with Alvarez when Gundogan rested because he also played to Everton away in the last game week in the Premier League. And then Grealish will play this game and will be rested for the Brighton game and Haaland will be up top. That is for me going to be, it could easily be Foden for Grealish, I am not fully sure about that. But that is the most likely City eleven with Haaland as striker. What a scary lineup that is. Coming on to Chelsea now and having a bit of discussion about Chelsea, super frank. And super Chelsea team right now, we are striving for points and we are safe now. So we have nothing to worry. We are on the beach now. We are just awaiting Pochettino's appointment. Players being sold. Loftus Cheek, sadly, a player I absolutely love to be the first one that is going to AC Milan. So coming on to Chelsea, the injury news. We have no Angulo for this game. That's a bit of concern that is it not another serious injury. Ben Chilwell is out. We all know Mason is out. Reese is out. Koulibaly is back in training but will not play this game. And Bari Shell is another one who is got injured in training. And Kukurel is not available for this game. So before I start, I think uh, uh, discussing on the lineup, I just want to talk on is there any way we can beat Manchester City or get a result out of them? See, there is a way if you have a proper tactical structure, if you have a proper plan. We don't have that. To only beat City, you need fitness. You need to be running all around the pitch, uh, shielding your defense and ready for the counter. We just don't have fit players right now, being very, very honest. 
you can like super frank lampard you cannot like super frank lampard and see even i don't read super has a uh, frank as a manager but super frank was correct when he said this squad does not have a fitness to play the football that he wants to play and does not have the fitness to compete with the size right now he wasn't wrong we are not a very fit side we do not press as a unit we do not play with a lot of energy the reports were coming from big journalists that pre-season did not go well and that is showing to play manchester city to beat manchester you need to have full energy for the game you need to have the energy to take their attack and counter them and if real madrid could not do that do our players have the energy now for me what can frank do in this game frank himself needs to improve and frank for me in this game needs to go with energy sally with no mason uh, possible for this game we have no kulibale for this game no reese for this game i think we have to go with trevor at the right back he's a much better option than cesar and has played very good games for me if you really trust mendy now then why bring him back mendy back in the last game and drop him now play mendy and continue till the end of the season and play for me luis sol at the left who can provide some attacking threat and can be the one that can take on uh, rico luis and find spaces behind rico luis and then for me it has to be wesley for fun and thiago silva we have no other option and back four is a way to go we lose or win we have to go with the mentality to try to counter and with no kuli bale we have literally no option but to play back four and then in the midfield i think we need to go with the pivot of enzo and loftus cheek i think that is the best way to go with physicality of loftus cheek who had a very good cameo in the last game and enzo fernandez and i think i will love to go with an attack of sterling at the left i will love to go with attack of meduke at the right and i will love to go in the middle gallagher in a more like a number 8 or number 10 role along with enzo and uh, loftus cheek and striker in form of kai havertz where we can cause him problem with the counter gallagher havertz and sterling and meduke can press like hell and enzo and loftus cheek can uh, do well in the middle with physicality of loftus cheek and passing of enzo but in my opinion frank because of the magnitude of this game might go with kovacic instead of a meduke or even instead of a gallagher he might go with kovacic in this game so i will love to see a particular lineup but let's see what frank does but i think back four is the one we are only going to play i think we need energy in this game we need counter attacks we need the pace of meduke and sterling we need the uh, you can say a bit of movement like a false nine from havertz and we need a bit of energy of gallagher in this game there's no chance of a result but if you want to pull any chance of a result or a self respect for the club we need to do that and we have to go with the attacking mentality and try to play them if we try to sit back it could be a long day and could be a massive battering pass 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 it could be a 2 nil 3 nil but that will be humiliating to watch now on my prediction and can it be the titles uh, can we be the party spoilers see if nottingham get a draw against arsenal or a victory sorry a victory is done title race is done and dusted and city will be crowned the champions and even if nottingham forest uh, lose to arsenal then also city can beat us and be the champions at their home on one hand i will like for city to win in the faces of a player so they know that they have to respond next season sir alex ferguson used to do the same thing with his united team which was a team of winners where they had to give us a guard of honor and they were so embarrassed that they came back next season and won the title and they never wanted to be part of that that's the way i want them to celebrate the title in front of our faces and our players remembering that they are the ones that brought us the situation and need to respond but right now with these players i don't know what to expect but i will say just one thing i don't give a damn about party spoilers i want to go there and see a display the season is over but it doesn't mean we can lose to manchester city 6-0 united 3-0 and newcastle 3-0 and in the season that losses that thrashings will go on to next season but if we can put a positive performance we can lose 2-1 1-0 3-1 we can take some positivity with that so on my final opinion i will say and my prediction we have to fight against manchester city we have to give our all we have to go with the energy we have to play the lineup i thought that could work against manchester city and that is the way we have to play now to my final prediction i think manchester city are too superior julian alvarez troubling silva and fofana i don't think they will be able to handle julian alvarez i think riyad mahrez against luis sol could be a very very long day i love luis sol but defensively he's not good enough you go towards kevin de bruyne he will have an absolute center to enjoy and erling haaland might be taken on with thiago silva but then julian alvarez will slide in a grilish or a four and will slide in it's a long day but i do see a score a goal because city might be a bit on the beach in terms of if they've already secured the game so i think i'm going with a 3-1 uh, manchester city victory but that is me being a bit more positive because it could easily be a 4-0 3-0 2-0 but again i will say up the blues up the chelsea whatever happens i'll support this club up the blues